Hey everyone, Scott here. A short announcement. I wanted to mention a show I've mentioned in the past on this podcast I think you should check out. It's called Business Wars, and it's brought to you by Wondery. Each season of the show digs into some great corporate rivalries. There's 21st century ones like Facebook versus Snapchat, or older ones like Nike versus Adidas. Each episode gives you an inside look at what prompted entrepreneurs to take risks that drove their companies to new heights, or it failed and drove them into the ground. The new season is Starbucks versus Dunkin'. They follow these two coffee giants into a war that began in the 1950s, and it's now more intense than ever. The coffee industry is worth $100 billion a year. But the battle between these two companies is about more than coffee. Here's a clip from the new Starbucks vs. Dunkin' season of Business Wars. Before you jump in, be sure to subscribe to Business Wars and other podcasts from Wondery on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening right now. It's 1950 in Quincy, Massachusetts. At 6 a.m. on a cool September morning, a big, genial man named Bill Rosenberg opens his store's glass door. He calls a place Open Kettle. It's the first donut and coffee shop ever to provide seats for its customers. A group of men wait outside, eager for their morning java. Some are factory workers. Others are salesmen and businessmen. The first to hurry in wears heavy pants and a work shirt. Morning, Bill. Hey, Marty. Ready for the usual? You bet. Coffee with two sugars and two glazed donuts. Gotta have it to start my day. Rosenberg turns to two men who sport suits, ties, and hats. Morning, guys. Hey, Bill. Know what? Your coffee smells so good it wakes me up before I've had a sip. The men sit at the low curved counter on leather top stools. Rosenberg goes behind the counter. He smiles as he fills their cups with the drink they crave. As soon as their cups are empty, he fills them up again. Above the pot, a wall sign reads, Ours is the best coffee in the world. Every morning, his shop fills up like this, and it never fails to make him smile. He heads into the kitchen. He loves watching the donut dough cook in the fryer's bubbling oil. When they turn golden brown, cooks whisk them from the fryer with giant spoons. He savors the donut's rich, yeasty fragrance as they cool on metal racks. Beside the racks, deep bowls are filled with frosting in vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, and maple flavors. Rosenberg grabs a tablespoon and digs out a taste of strawberry icing, his favorite. Dozens of donuts are iced. Others are dipped in powdered sugar and shot full of cream. Many are stuffed with jelly and succulent flavors. Lemon, blueberry, pineapple, apple spice. Rosenberg picks up a jelly donut. As he bites into it, a big magenta blob squirts onto his shirt. He laughs, wipes it off, and licks it from his finger. There's just one thing about his store that he doesn't like. He calls his staff together. We're doing great, but I hate the name of the store. You're the one who named it Open Kettle. True, true, I'll take the blame. But we need another name. Throw out anything that comes to mind. How about Mr. Donut? Or our best donuts? Maybe, maybe, I feel like we could do better. I got it. What do you do with a donut and coffee? You dunk the donut. That's it. Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, it's got a nice ring to it. But coffee is Rosenberg's true love. To prove it, the big news sign outside his store reads, Dunkin' Donuts, the world's finest coffee. Like every dedicated coffee purveyor who will follow him, Bill Rosenberg is passionate about brewing the perfect cup an eighth grade dropout, Rosenberg would teach the average Joe to take their cup of Joe more seriously in America. Decades in the future, that passion will take his company where he never imagined it would go, head-to-head with a cross-country rival that becomes a global juggernaut. Starbucks Coffee, Tea, and Spice opens in 1971 in a small store in Seattle's historic Pike Place Market. The store is designed to look slightly nautical. A long wall with wooden shelves displays 30 different kinds of coffee. They sell only coffee beans and the best home coffee machines. But they sometimes offer samples, served in porcelain cups that make the coffee taste even better. Seattle is in an economic downturn, but Starbucks catches on. 
It's a hit with Seattle citizens who love the idea of savoring their coffee at home, especially on those gloomy days in winter. And Starbucks is the only place in Seattle that offers quality coffee. It catches the attention of a young 28-year-old. From the moment he encounters Starbucks, he and the entire business will never be the same. His name is... That was just a preview of the first episode of Starbucks vs. Duncan on Business Wars. Subscribe to hear the rest on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening right now.